There is a lot of content on Khan Academy, especially in math and science, and we're continuing to add more and more content every day in math and science and in other areas like history and art history and wherever else. But what I want to do in this video is make sense of some potential progressions, especially in math and science, and see how all of these different topics relate to each other in ways that we can use Khan Academy. So in blue here, I have, a, I have a proposed math progression. So we have a mission on Khan Academy. It was called Early Math, and it's also called the K through 2 mission. And when I talk about missions, this is where you take a diagnostic, and based on that, it starts recommending things. And then there are mastery challenges. This is all, all of these game mechanics. And you can work at your own time and pace. You can also access these, what we call in library mode, where you can just pick and choose which exercises you want to practice, or which videos or articles you want to take a look at. But what I recommend recommend a student do, if they haven't already, master the early, the early learning mission. Finish that all the way to 100%. Then do third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and then seventh grade. Once you start getting into the sixth and seventh grade range, you're starting to do a little bit of pre-algebra. And as you, see, as you see, once you get past seventh grade, a whole new world starts to open up. So once you get part, past seventh grade, you start getting into some real you start getting into some real algebra. And, and my map here starts to get a little bit more complex. But what you see going on here is you have an algebra basics mission. And the idea of that, that's actually a, a bit of a subset of what you would see in the eighth grade algebra one, algebra two missions, although there's a few extra things relative to the eighth grade mission. But it's the very core, it's the very core of algebra. And you can see that if you were to finish that mission, all sorts of extra things open up. Now, if you want to know your algebra more comprehensively, and I encourage you to do so, you should complete the eighth grade mission, the algebra one mission, and the algebra two missions. And what you'll see is if you finish the algebra basics mission, the eighth grade mission isn't that much incremental work, or vice versa. And if you finish these, then the algebra one mission isn't that much incremental work. It gives you credit for where they overlap. And then if you finish these three, the algebra two mission isn't that much incremental work. But if you were to do this collection, you have a really solid foundation for algebra, and, and all sorts of things start to become available for you. If you were to do the algebra basics mission, you are fairly well equipped to start thinking about things like finance and capital markets, microeconomics, macroeconomics. If you do the Algebra Basics mission, you're also ready for biology. A lot of biology doesn't have mathematics in it, but there is some algebra once you start getting into biology. And in fact, there's some probability and statistics, some basic probability and statistics once you start getting into things like genetics. So I encourage you to, to have that nice foundation in algebra. Chemistry too. There isn't math throughout. There isn't algebra throughout it. There's, there actually is math throughout chemistry, uh, but the algebra will help you go into. The, the, you will start seeing some where you, some types of problems where you might have to solve a quadratic or things like that. And so it's useful to have a solid foundation in algebra. If you want to go into physics, physics. This is where the algebra, the physics on Khan Academy is currently non-calculus based. We're going to add calculus based soon. But in order to engage with it, you have to have a very solid foundation and algebra. That's where this arrow comes from. And you need to know the basics of trigonometry. That's why I drew this dotted arrow. You should know what a sine, cosine, tangent of, of, of angles are and, and the kind of right triangle definitions or the unit circle definitions of those, those trig functions. And that's just the very basics of trigonometry. But once you know that, the basics of algebra and the basics of trigonometry, you're ready to engage in physics. And related to physics, of course, and it's really based on physics, is cosmology and astronomy. And once again, if you have the basics of algebra, you're really ready to start engaging on that front. But what about math? Well, you can just keep going. If you have the basics of algebra, you can start going into probability and statistics, which is also super foundational. If you were to go to graduate school one day or do research in almost anything, probability and statistics is core. Frankly, any, any type of profession you go into, there will be a lot of probability and statistics. But we can keep going. Geometry, and geometry is a neat area as a neat subject because not only will you be uh, kind of studying things that you traditionally associate with geometry but you will it, it's it's really the first class or the first domain that you will see where you're going to think about really proving things rigorously and so once you get this good foundation in algebra and geometry you're ready to really dive into trigonometry and once you have all of that built out you can go to calculus which you will find fascinating, which opens up the worlds of multivariable calculus, differential equations. And linear algebra is typically taken when you're in college 
after calculus, but really to engage it in linear algebra, you need a solid foundation in algebra and a bit of a foundation and a bit of foundation in trigonometry. So I encourage you to go in that progression. Now we also see things like SAT, of course, the standardized test that's a big part of college admissions. And I encourage you to engage on the test prep for the SAT on Khan Academy that we do in conjunction with the College Board. Not just because it will hopefully improve your SAT score, but the SAT is a measure of college readiness. And so the better that you're, that you're able to do on this, this is a, a solid indicator of your college readiness. And you can really start to engage on that SAT practice as soon as you have a solid foundation of the algebra. So as soon as you have the algebra basics uh, mission done, I encourage you to go into the SAT mission. Now to, to really engage with everything on the SAT, mission, especially on the math side, you're going to, or the SAT prep, I encourage you to also get through the algebra too because there are going to be some functions there. And, and the other pieces here that I haven't talked about here are the programming. And you could start programming on Khan Academy. And for those of you, those of you who haven't seen it, it's, it's a lot of fun. You get to work on projects and share it with your friends. And there's even a peer review mechanism. You can start engaging with that at a fairly early level once you have some of your core arithmetic done, but obviously the more math you have behind you, the better. But then once you get through some of the these kind of core subjects that we've been talking about, especially basics of algebra, the very basics of trigonometry, then you can start going into advanced JavaScript and algorithms. And advanced JavaScript especially you'll enjoy because here you can start to do simulations of nature, simulations of some of the things that you will learn in these science topics. Or you can even really start to make video games. So hopefully this gives you a good sense of what's available, especially on kind of the math science side of Khan Academy, in a way that you can progress through it. And if you really, you know, all of these, the things in blue from early math all the way through calculus, there are missions for. So let me. So kind of all of this stuff right over here, there are these missions for, which are these interactive, they give you as many exercises as you need, all of these game mechanics. SAT also has an interactive tool for it. But the things where we don't have missions yet, I encourage you to go through the videos, go one by one. If I'm going to go work through a worked example, or whoever's making the videos doing a worked example, try to pause the video, see if you can work through it on your own. If you see me do it, Look at the video, then stop the video, and then try to do that work over again. Do the exercises there, and I think you'll be surprised how much you can actually learn. We get a lot of testimonials every day from people all walks of life who thought that they weren't good at math or thought that they weren't good at science. But when they work step by step, they build their foundations, they go back to any gaps that they might have, uh, over and over again people are surprised by how much they're actually able to progress. And just as a reminder, this isn't all of the content on Khan Academy. We have some great content on the humanities and history and art history. We're adding a whole set of partner content and we're working on a whole bunch of things as we speak. So enjoy.